Public support. This is not a place for your child. Oh my dear God. An infant going inside the house of death. Please don't do that. Unbelievable. Please don't do that. That is a house of death. Jesus Christ came to give you life and life more abundantly. He did not come to provide you death. He came, he died as a, as a child born in a manger. He came to live a life that was perfect, and he died on your behalf so that you can be forgiven of sin. This house is a house of sin and death. I would pray that you would come out of this place. The gospel is true. I would tell you to repent from this sin and come out. While they were marching there in Washington, D.C., some of them got up and began to speak to the crowd. They got up and said to the crowd, one woman said, I am a nasty woman. And the things that came out of her mouth, I say, I believe you. You are a nasty woman. But what you need to understand is that there's more going on than this verbal stuff coming from the mouth of these people. There's an underlying thing going on here. There's a spirit attached to this thing up there in Washington, D.C. Make no mistake about it, folks. This is not a joke. Yes, sir. They spat on the preacher of the Word of God. She got up and said, I'm a nasty woman. And I believe she's a nasty woman. These people pass by. They scream. They do things that I can't even tell you in a mixed, in a mixed auditorium this morning. I've got photographs of stuff that these people had and I thought to myself, I'm 70 years old and I haven't seen everything yet. Because some of the stuff I saw there amazed me that they would carry it in public. That's up to you is how curious you are, but I warn you, if you do a search on these, on these marchers in Washington, D.C., you will pull up stuff that will make you throw up. But once you do, if you bother to look at it, I'm gonna warn you, you're going to find out that it goes much deeper than simply the sign they carry. There's a real agenda going on with these people. You understand why they're so mad? They're mad because for the first time in a long time, and that includes George W. Bush, that includes Bill Clinton, that includes uh, Obama, that goes all the way back before them. For the first time in a long time, somebody has riled their feathers. Somebody has made them mad. These people have been stirred up. I wonder why. Anybody that's got half sense would wonder too. What's really going on? What is the agenda? They carried one of the most disgusting signs I've ever seen in my life. I have never in my lifetime seen anything like this. And I'm going to show it to you in just a moment. I remember when I was a boy in this town growing up, there were certain things that I never heard from the people who got drunk every Friday and Saturday night. There are certain things that people just did not do that never darkened a church door. They never claimed to be Christians. They never claimed to know the Lord. But there were certain things you did not hear or see. But here's a sign. Remember, they carry their sign. And here's what it said. If Mary had had an abortion, we wouldn't be in this mess. Kind of shocking, isn't it? There it is. If Mary had had an abortion, in other words, Mary, the virgin daughter of Zion, Mary, the virgin that brought forth Christ, if she had had an abortion, we wouldn't be in this mess. That introduces a couple of things there. Number one, the bold arrogance of these blasphemers. They have no fear of God. I don't know if you can see this, but I'll make it available. I'll leave it up here after the service. Come up and look at this. Look at the facial expression on these two right here. If you've ever seen mockery, you're seeing it here like you've never seen it before. Oh, they're so proud of what they're doing here. If Mary had had an abortion, they're blaming our Lord Jesus Christ for all their problems. Let me tell you something this morning. If the Lord Jesus Christ had not lived, we would really have a problem. He has been the answer to every problem I've ever had. 
Amen. If I did not have the Son of God, I wouldn't have anything. He saved my soul, wrote my name, the Lamb's Book of Life, and He gave me an eternal life and a home in heaven. But they said if Mary had had an abortion, we wouldn't be in this mess. I'm going to call your attention to something now. I'm going to give you the real reason for the march on Washington. Here's the real reason. This is the real reason. A-B-O-R-T-I-O-N. That is the rite of passage. That's what it's all about. The so-called a woman's right to her body. What are you talking about her body? That baby is not her body. Have you ever noticed, and I need to say this again, that every last abortionist that I've ever known in my lifetime has been somebody that was born. It's simple on the surface of it, but profound in the thought. Every last one of them have been born. Amen. Somebody let them be born. They wouldn't be able to walk the streets and try to kill babies if somebody hadn't shown mercy on them and let them be born. Yet they want to deny that birth and that life to an innocent baby. The argument is simple for some of them. It's just a matter of life and death. It is simple on the surface. It is a matter of life and death. Because the idea is it's so final. Once you choose to kill that baby, you can't call it back. Once that baby is dead, it's dead, it's gone. You can't change that. You can't change your mind later on and say, well, I wish I could do something now to change. You can't do it. It is so final. Therefore, they say, well, a woman has a right to her body and what about rape and incest and, and the life of the mother and this and that and they'll always throw out some straw man that only deals with maybe one or two percent of all the abortions talk to these people that leave the abortion clinics talk to the nurses that have worked in there that have had an epiphany a change of mind a change of soul somebody got to them or god got to them and they couldn't stand any more innocent blood they couldn't take take any more of it Talk to them and they'll tell you, let me tell you something, the, half the story hasn't been told about the abortion bills. There's a quota that they have to meet once a month. It's about money in these abortion bills. It's not about helping women. It's about a dollar bill. And the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. You gotta repent, sir, for murdering babies. Why? Because it's a sin before God. <gasps> Why? Well. Stinky breath. Yeah, Why? it's pretty it's pretty evil of you, sir. Yeah, I am. And, and I hope and pray that you yeah. ha. Well, that's what you do to babies, huh? Yeah. I love it. You love it, huh? Yeah, I do. Okay. I hope that you come to Christ, sir. Oh, I never go to Christ. I hope that you come to Christ. No, sir. I don't go to Christ. Yeah, you I you, don't listen to Christ. You, you will have a darkened heart, sir. I do have a darkened yeah. heart. Yeah. You have a darkened heart. I do, I do very, very much and so. You will stand yeah. before God in judgment. Yes, day I will. Day. Every day. You will stand before God in judgment. Yes, I will. Every day. All of the babies that I you I love it. Kill. I love it. Yeah, keep tearing the babies yeah, apart. Yeah, I will. Keep tearing the babies I apart. I will. Keep, keep tearing the babies what? apart. Oh. Yeah, sir. The babies, their blood screams from the ground. Their blood screams from the ground. You are a murderer, sir. You are a murderer.